Okay, welcome to this week's episode of Love Summit. And where are we heading off to? We are headed south again in January. We've never been airstreaming or RVing in January, and we are very much looking forward to this. This is a brand new experience for us, and we're pretty excited about it. Yes, if you've not seen it before, we've stored our airstream this year in Georgia. That was in December's video. Yep, and we're going to go pick it up. We're going to show you exactly how to um, go through the dewinterization. We mm -hmm. picked it up, and... We're going to take a mini break on the way and stay two nights in Atlanta and do some fun stuff there. Yeah, so we're using this as a little road trip opportunity. We've got a concert we're going to go to. And we're going to be staying in a really cool boutique hotel, probably almost too chic for us. Yeah, so <laughs> stay tuned for that. And like I said, we're going to show you how to do uh, our dewinterization, pick it up, see what it looks like. And we've had one epic mistake happen already. Right, so we'll, we'll explain tell you what about that. that yeah. We'll explain what that mistake is. Also give you some tips and tricks for making sure you don't make similar mistakes. And we'll see if we make any more mistakes as we could have. This right. is the first we time we're doing this. Yeah, let's hope not. So let's get going. So we are standing in front of the W sign. And this is part of the Marriott brand hotels. And it's a boutique hotel that caters to a younger and more sophisticated crowd. And, you know, as older RVers, we thought we would fit right in. Yeah, we'll fit right in with that young crowd. Absolutely. <laughs> you know that I'm a big fan of the F-150 as a capable tow vehicle. And one of the reasons I like the F-150 is because it's not always a tow vehicle. Sometimes you have to do stuff other than pulling your RV. For example, this parking garage, which was the only one we had around, has a six foot eight inch clearance. Our F-150, we have a special card that gives all of our heights, weights, and specifications, says it's six feet, six inches. That gives only about two inches to clear this particular parking garage. If I had a 250 or 350, that'd nah, be kind of dicey. Now, there is a parking, open parking garage across the street that's just for anybody to, to pay and use. So an open parking, not, not a garage. It's not a garage and it's not liable from the hotel. Right. And when I asked the front desk lady, I, I'm like, you know, what do you think about parking there? And, and I get it, probably 80% of the reason she told me was they want to sell their parking garage, but she said no. She goes, people have been finding some real creative ways to break into vehicles, and she personally would not do it. Right. And so we have all of our stuff in there, all of our gear. Generator, solar generators, panels. solar panels. All that stuff is visible, and plus I didn't want somebody breaking a window. Right. And then we have to find a broken window replacement, all that other stuff. So. One of the things when we were sailors, they said never, ever, ever ignore local knowledge. That's the most important thing you can have. This was no local knowledge. Right. We decided to park here. If we had had a 250 or 350, we would have been out in the open where she said it wasn't a good place to be. Right. This just gave us peace of mind. Exactly. So this is our boutique little small room at the W. It's one of the smallest rooms that they have. But it has some it's called like a fabulous room though, right? It's, it's, it's not a wow room. Which it's a is, fabulous room. It's a fabulous room, according to them. So we're just going to give you a little tour because I think this room is probably way too chic for us. Yeah, it's the, what W supposedly we looked them up are designed for a younger crowd. Chic young people. And we've seen quite a few of those chic younger people coming in. So I think we're probably one of the older people. That so I, I pulled the truck in for valet parking behind an AMG hammer, I think, a Mercedes AMG. So yeah, it was yeah. embarrassing. All right. So we have basically two areas here. We have the bathroom and the bedroom. So we're going to start with the bathroom. We have probably a very kind of plain little room for the toilet. I don't think there's any, uh, it's, this is just like a purple room. There's, nice. no, there's no pictures, there's no anything. So I think it's supposed to be sleek, minimalistic. So we have this nice basin sink here with your chic amenities. And the most unusual feature of this room, I think, is this shower. This shower is enormous. It's confused, Cindy. It has confused me, but I think I sort of have figured it out. The shower part is over here with all the amenities. But if you walk into the shower, you can see right into the bedroom. Yep. And I could see into the shower. Mm. So let's just say that if you're with a family member who, you know, you're related to, this might be a little awkward. Good tip. Anyway, that's the most unique feature. The rest is just kind of like minimalistic. Kind but of very cheap. pretty. It's it's got a nice decor. Yeah, it's got a nice 
decor, it kind of reflects what we saw downstairs, which we'll give you a taste of, which is very um, earthy, uh, what do I want to say? Kind of Art Nouveau yeah. sort of thing. So with, with the uh, organic shapes and stuff. So gray, purple, white. And it's got a mini bar. Fridge. A fridge, a purple table, and a closet with a safe and a steam cleaner. So, I think we'll have a good time here. Right, so this is very uh, unusual for us, a very special treat. So what's your special treat drink? A vodka martini that's dirty with olive juice and two olives straight up. What is your drink of choice? Yes, my special drink of choice for tonight is a Bombay Sapphire Martini, wicked dry. You know, I lived to what Winston Churchill used to say. He wanted it so dry that he would just basically wave the bottle of uh, vermouth over the top of the glass. Straight up, olives. Awesome. I would have done onions sometimes. I like the that's, small that's onions. Well, more of a Gibson than a martini. Yeah, right? I like them both, but they ran out of onions, so. Yep. Cheers. Yep. We're here at the Marta station, and we're gonna be taking the subway to the concert tonight. So one of the things we're doing is we're kind of reconning because this is the first time we've ever taken the Atlanta subway. So we're gonna go ahead and prepay for our tickets. It's uh, five bucks for round trip. a round trip. So. That'll make things easy for tonight. And also we're figuring out which side of the street to be on so yes. that we're not doing that late at night as well. Yes. Interesting that the coins are dollar coins. Yeah, these should be useless. <laughs> it's like hitting the jackpot. I know. And our two breeze cards. So last night we had dinner at the Mellow Mushroom. The one thing about the W is there are not a lot of restaurant options around this area that are close and walkable. So they have the restaurant inside, which is called Locomotives, and it got mixed reviews. And so we came here to the Mellow Mushroom because we had lunch at this place when we visited the caverns, and it turned out to be a very nice option. All right, make sure you check out that video over here if you want to check out another Mellow Mushroom. Absolutely. And some underwater caverns. Absolutely, that was a fun trip. So we're here at Centennial Olympic Park, next to the spot where the pipe bomb went off on July 27th, 1996 at about 1.20 a.m. Um, and this honors Richard Jewell, one of the security guards. But I wanted to come here because actually, I worked on this case back in 1996 with the uh, FBI. They flew me out to Washington and they say that every bomb requires three things, an explosive, a timer, and a battery. And the terrorist used a never ready battery, a 732, to um, ignite the bomb. So I was part of the team that was going to track down where that battery was bought based upon the bomb fragments um, and what was left of the battery. So it was a very interesting experience for me and I kind of wanted to be where that part of history happened. Yep, it looks like a nice little memorial there. Yes. So now it's time for lunch, and I think we found a beer garden. How convenient! I think we got one of those for Christmas, didn't we? We got two of them. Of course, my shirt is from 
a movie, a sequel that went out in 2001, and one of the main characters was wearing this shirt in the opening scene. One of my favorite movies, one of my favorite characters. We felt it was appropriate tonight. Comment below if you know the movie, and bonus if you know yeah, the character. Leave a comment if you can think of who wore this shirt. It was pretty obscure. It. Yep, we're coming into our storage unit here. Yep, it's still there. Yay! It's next to the, the, the burrito place. Yep. Looks like our neighbor, the uh, fifth, big fifth, Class A left. Yep, there you go. It's okay. Looks good. We're gonna open her up and see how our storage techniques fared. So we said earlier in this video that we had a big fail and yes, we left Vermont without keys to the Airstream. Uh, so, but we had left a set with uh, Cindy's parents, so we do have a set. But that reminds me that it's important to note that you make mistakes when the three D's of mistakes occur. Any one of the three D's, then you're more likely to make a mistake. And those three D's are, one, you do something different. And that's what we did in this case. We're doing something different. We've never really, we would never leave without the keys. The last thing we would do would be to lock it. Two, you're distracted. And that's why we have our checklist, so that if somebody comes up and talks to us and stuff while we're doing something, we can go right back to the checklist. Or three, you do something dumb. And we don't do dumb things, but... Hopefully. To recount, you make mistakes when you are either doing something different, distracted, or doing something dumb. So let's go ahead and take a look and see outside how she fared. It is a nice day. Alright. Hello, little love sub. Alright, we are here. She looks just like what we left her. Perfect. Alright, I don't see any mice issues, really. Nor ant issues. I think we're looking pretty good. So we're All gonna right. get some stuff out and get our things going here. So I have an interior spare parts kit while Rich has exterior spare parts kits. My interior spare parts kits has a bunch of stuff like batteries, some extra Velcro hooks, stuff like that, like a refrigerator knob, um, a couple of latches, and I was 99% sure we had extra blanks for the keys that we left in Vermont, and I was right. We did have two blanks. One matches the deadbolt, one matches the exterior lock. And this one kind of surprised me because this one has been already cut. And this actually goes to the exterior water fill. So yep. um, this is just an extra key. So what are we gonna do? So we're gonna take these to Home Depot and see if they can cut them and get an extra set. So it's always good to have an extra set of keys. We always just kept a set of blanks on hand. Just in case, just, just in, in case, case we needed to help someone out or something like that. Absolutely, so that's what we had in our interior first parts kit. So this may not be the most scenic place to have lunch here, but we're doing work on the Airstream before we get ready to tow her off and it's outside and it's a nice day, perfectly sunny, and we're enjoying the outdoor weather in January. It's all a matter of perspective. This is the best lunch I could ever envision right now in a parking lot in January. next to a burrito truck. But this works for me. Awesome. And the great thing about this campground that we're at after our, with our storage site is that, you know, we've got full hookups and that allow us to really easily dewinterize, get all that winterizing fluid into the sewer. Cause you flush the tanks and everything. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So. Good. We're good to go. We're dewinterized in January. Excellent. So before we went, we printed off our dewinterization checklist. And, you know, it's just great to go through, especially when you're doing something different. Remember the three Ds. Different, distracted, and dumb. So this is different because we're not sanitizing this time like we would normally do after a full season. This was only in storage a month. So we got to skip the sanitizing steps, but still mark the ones that we needed to do. Perfect. Make sure you keep following us as we eventually hit the Florida RV Super Show. 
So if you like this video, give us a big thumbs up. And if you think we were in a subscription, like this, subscribe. And comment below if you've done a mini break and how it worked for you. Because we come out with RV and Airstream related videos just like this one every Tuesday. Thanks for watching.